Greetings. Thank you for staying patient. And thank you for awaiting my new video. So, we are going to continue from where we left off in the last video. If I am not mistaken, I think we left off somewhere near Odin. There's something similar. <laughs> oh, I bookmarked it for myself with a comb. Odin and Frigg. Odin was one of the Aesir, or warrior gods. He was the first god to exist, and was father of all the other gods. His brothers, Vili and Ve, seem to fade out of Norse mythology, and it is not known what became of them. Odin was also king of the gods, both Aesir and Vanir. He made the earth and the sky. He created humans and all living creatures, and ruled over them. He was stern, he was a stern and awesome king. Gods and humans feared his anger, which was not always justified. He could be spiteful, and sometimes used his powers in unworthy ways. He was respected more than loved, and was worshipped by kings and nobles rather than ordinary people. As god of battle, Odin caused wars on earth by flinging down his spear. He decided who won, so warriors did their best to appease him. He was unpredictable though, and did not always give victory where expected. However, Odin was inspired. Odin inspired poets as well as warriors. He made a dangerous journey to Jotunheim to obtain the meat of poetry. Sometimes he allowed a human a sip of it, and that person became a great poet. He also sought very hard for wisdom, and paid dearly for his knowledge. For this reason, he was worshipped by seers and magicians. The bravest of warriors slain in battle were chosen to join Odin in his great hall, Valhalla. He was god of the dead, but he shared this task with others. Freya entertained dead warriors. Hell took those who died in their beds or of disease. Valhalla, or Hall of the Slain, was Odin's magnificent hall in Asgard. Here he sported and drank with the chosen heroes. They spent their days fighting and were revived every evening to feast and to make merry. Valhalla's walls were made of golden spears, and its roof of called shields. It had 540 doors, each big enough to let 800 armed men through, side by side. They are very big doors. Valeskjav, meaning shelf of the slain, was Odin's other hall, where his great throne, Hidshav, stood. I think I said that right, I don't, I don't know. From his throne, Odin watched over the nine worlds. He was helped by two ravens. They flew through the worlds, gathering news which they then whispered in Odin's ears. The ravens were called Hugin, Thought, and Munin, Memory. The Valkyries were female warriors who did Odin's will. They had frightening names like Shaker, Raging Warrior, 
and shrieking. They swooped over battlefields on horseback, directing the fighting. They begged the heroes to fill Valhalla. A man chosen to die was said to see a Valkyrie just before the fatal blow. The Valkyries also worked as Odin's servants. They served with food no, they served food and drink to the warriors in Valhalla. Odin would often visit the other worlds in disguise. He travelled in a blue cloak and broad brimmed hat which hid his face. On long journeys he rode his wonderful eight legged horse Sleipnir. His magic spear called Gungnir and the gold arm ring always accompanied him. Frigg, Queen of the Gods. Frigg was Odin's wife and the Queen of the Gods. She was mother goddess and cared for all humans, though she was especially concerned for women and children. Frigg and Odin had a son called Balder. He died tragically and Frigg mourned him terribly. Because of this, many women felt she would be sympathetic to their sorrows. Their other son, Bregi, was married to Idun. Although she was very beautiful and was desired by many men, she was faithful to Odin. She was a match for Odin though, and could outwit him if she was determined to get her own way. Like Odin, Frigg could see what the future held for any human and what their fate would be, but she would never tell what she knew. Thor the Thunder God was Odin's eldest son. His mother was usually said to be Joth, which means Earth. She may have been one of Odin's lovers, or Joth could simply be a nickname for Frigg, who was closely linked with the Earth. Thor was exaggerated, colourful character. He was huge, even for a god, and incredibly strong. He had wild hair and beard and a temper to match. He was never angry for long though and easily forgave people. He did everything on a grand scale, feasting, drinking and fighting. He liked nothing better than a straightforward battle of strength and rarely used tricks or magic like some of the other gods. His brain did not always match the strength of his body, and the other gods sometimes teased him for it. But the people, like ordinary farmers, loved him for his simple outlook. He was probably the most popular of the Norse gods. His symbol was the oak tree. Thor was called Defender of Asgard since he protected it from the god's enemies. His greatest adversaries were the giants, and there are many tales of his fights with them. Although Thor was a warrior, he was also god of law and order, unlike Odin, who stood for war and destruction. As Thor defended Asgard against the giants, so he protected the Norsemen's homes and farms. Thor was the keeper of oaths too. Copies of his arm ring were kept in his temples and people swore oaths on them. They were then responsible to Thor to keep their word. Thor raced across the sky in his chariot, drawn by two goats. Tisnasha and Tisgrindu. It was the hooves that the people heard when it thundered on earth. He controlled the thunder and lightning and brewed up storms by blowing through his beard. Sailors prayed to him for protection from bad weather. 
also had a belt which doubled his strength when he buckled it on, and iron gauntlets which allowed him to grasp any weapon. The most famous of those weapons was his hammer, Jolnir. It always hit its target and returned to Thor's hands after use. When a thunderbolt struck earth, people said that Thor had flung down his hammer. But Jolnir did not only do harm, it also had protective powers, and people wore small copies of it as jewelry to keep them safe and to bring good luck. These charms were used to bless the dead, newborn babies, and brides. Thor was always more popular than Odin. This story helps to explain why. Odin was annoyed with Thor. He wanted a magic horse that Thor had. Thor gave it to his son instead of offering it to Odin. Later, Thor was trudging wearily home after a hard fight against the trolls. When he came to a swollen river, it was too deep to wait. Thor found a ferryman and asked him for a ride. The ferryman said his name was Harbert. He soon proved most unpleasant. He would not take Thor on board and told him that his mother was dead and his wife had run off with a mortal. He began to poke fun at the god, who lost his temper and began to shout. He yelled and boasted about his brave deeds, but each time the ferryman had a better story. Thor realized the ferryman did not mean to take him across, and stormed off. He had to walk miles to a ford. Back in Asgard, he found his mother well, and his wife faithful as ever, ever. He never discovered that Harbert was Odin in disguise. This was how Odin took out his spite over the horse. Thor was married to Sif, who was famous for her pure gold flowing hair. She was a goddess of fruitfulness and plenty. Her hair reminded people of a field of ripe corn and the harvest. In one of the myths, her hair was cut and stolen. Her misery until her hair was replaced represented the darkness of the winter season, when the corn did not grow. Sif and Thor lived in a great hall in Asgard called Bilksnir, which means lightning. Boulder and Tyr. Boulder was loved by everyone. He was an Aesir god and the son of Odin and Frigg. He was fair-haired and handsome. His face glowed and he was god of light, purity and beauty. Always gentle and kind, he was also very wise. His good judgment was sought in disputes and he was often able to reconcile enemies. He brought joy and harmony wherever he went. Boulder was happily married to Nana, and they lived peacefully in their hall, Bredebeck, set in tranquil countryside in Asgard. They had a son, Fosetti, who was god of justice. Tragically, Boulder's happiness was not to last, the envy and spite of Loki brought about his premature death. You can read the fatal tale about its terrible consequences on pages 37 to 38, which we will get to one day, I promise. Tyr was the bravest of the gods. He earned his reputation through his courage in dealing with the monstrous wolf Fenrir. One of his hands was torn off by Fenrir's giant jaws, and he was often called the one-handed afterwards. Tyr was renowned for his honor. He never broke his word, so, 
like though he was a god of law and order. His name was used to guarantee contracts, promises and pledges. He was patron of the local gatherings, where Norsemen traditionally passed laws and settled disputes. Loki had a special place among the gods. His parents were two fire giants for Bertie and Lavi, so he was not really a god. But he was the sworn brother and friend of Odin, and lived with the Aesir in Asgard. He was an attractive character, handsome, agile, and a great joker. He loved adventures, wait, he loved adventures and was exciting to be with. He was nosy, inventive, and loved gambling. These attributes got him into frequent trouble, but he was wily enough to get out of most fixes. He amused other gods, but teased and exasperated them too. He was very persuasive, and the gods often took his advice, which was not always good, and got them into trouble. Only one god, Heimdall, was always suspicious of Loki. Loki was especially talented at shape-changing. He could become any animal at will. He often made mischief as a fly, and took the form of a mare to get himself out of trouble over a bargain he and the gods had made with a stranger. However, as time went on, it gradually became clear to the gods that Loki was not just a handsome joker. He could be cunning, deceitful, and unstable. At times he told hurtful stories about others. Eventually the gods became wary of his behavior and began to feel he deserved the trouble he got into when he fooled around with giants and dwarves. They even began to laugh at him and take sides against him. This made Loki bitter, and slowly his nature grew darker and more truly evil. In the end, his spiteful tricks caused the death of Baldur, which triggered Ragnarok, or the doom of the gods. Odin warned Loki to have nothing to do with the giant S, anger border, but Loki defiled him or defied him, and took her as his mistress. They had three monstrous children. They were the wolf Fenrir, the serpent Jormungand, who was destined to destroy Thor, and their daughter Hel. Hel was grotesque. Her top half was a beautiful woman, but below the waist she was rotting and hideous, like a corpse. She became queen of the dead in Nilfheim. Loki's wife was called Sigyn. Despite his faults, she loved him and was faithful to him. She stood by him and protected him, even after he had caused Baldur's death. Sigyn and Loki had two sons, Vali and Navi, who came to a tragic end after the death of Baldur. The gods turned Valley into a wolf, and he tore his brother to pieces. They then used Navi's entrails to blind Loki for his punishment. Jesus. Njord was the most important of the Vanir gods, and chief god of fertility. Nod was god of the sea, and therefore was very important to the seafaring Vikings. He ruled the wind and the waves, provided fish for the fishermen, and favorable winds for traders. He lived in a hole by the sea. It was called Nurten, meaning shipyard or anchorage. Njord married a giantess called Skadi. You can read how this came about on page 25. Thank you. Skadi was a great huntress and traveled miles on her snowshoes in winter with her bow and arrows. The marriage was not a success. 
Skadi loved the mountains and could not bear the sea. Njord could not survive without the smell of the sea and hated the rugged mountains. In the end, they lived apart. Nord was one of the important leaders who swapped places in Asgard and Vanaheim after the war between the gods. Aegir and his wife Ran were, all, were also sea gods. They lived on the seabed and had nine daughters who moved the waves. Their personalities were changeable, like the sea they lived in. They could be pleasant or violently destructive. They needed subjects for their kingdoms, so if a person fell overboard or a ship sank, they would drag the victim to the ocean floor in their nets. There Aegir and Ren entertained them in their hole, which was crammed with treasure from shipwrecks. This is the kind of stuff they tell to sailors when they die, to make it better. <laughs> the god Heimdall was someone... Oh. The god Heimdall had some very special attributes. He was said to be the son of nine maidens. They may have been the nine daughters of Iga and Ran. Oh. His senses were supernaturally good. He had hearing so acute, he could hear grass grow, and sight so sharp, he could detect movement a hundred miles away. He needed little sleep, and was very strong. Because of his special gifts, he was made watchman of the gods. He guarded B first, the rainbow bridge between Asgard and Midgard. He challenged all strangers and warned the gods of their approach. He had a horn called Gal, which he blew in the morning. It was kept by the fountain of Mimir. Its blast sounded through the nine worlds at Ragnarok, or the end of the world. Himdal was Loki's implacable, implacable, implacable enemy. They were both fire gods and clashed all the time. Himdal rode a gold main stallion called Gultop. Himdal's journey or the song of Rig. Once Heimdall paid a visit to Earth, he disguised as a man called Rig. On his journey, he came to a turf hut owned by a poor couple called Ai and Edda, and asked them for food and shelter. Despite being so poor, they shared all they had with him for three nights. As a reward, he, called, he caused Edda to have a son. The couple called him Thor and he was ancestor to all the serfs in the world. Rig next came to a comfortable farm owned by Afi and his wife Amma. They were prosperous and gladly gave Rig shelter for three days. They were also granted a son for their kindness. He was called Carl, and all farmer owners, oh, all farm owners were descended from him. Rig moved on until he came to a gracious hall owned by the noble Fahir and his wife Modia. That's awfully close, I think, to father and mother. He spared no expense to entertain him for three days. Modia too produced a son who was named Jal. Jal grew up handsome and very strong. One day he was out hunting when Heimdall appeared. The god taught Jal some of the wisdom and secret knowledge of the gods. Lastly, he revealed that it was he who had caused Jal to be born. He told the boy it was his right to go out and win land and treasures. Jal did as he was told, and became a wealthy nobleman. He married Enna, a chief's daughter. Their children founded the race of nobles. I think this is how they glorified falling off your boat and drowning. <laughs> these people would take you, and they don't know what these people are. I guess regular humans back then. Freya, the most 
most famous of all goddesses was Freya. She was a Vanir, daughter of the most important Vanir god, Njot. She had a brother called Freya. It was said their mother was Njot's sister. Jord, I guess? Freya was goddess of love and beauty. She had been married to the god Od. God Od, God Od, God Od, God Od. <laughs> he had left her and disappeared for some unknown reason. She mourned for him, and when she cried, she wept golden tears. Nevertheless, she was very lovely, and had many suitors. She took leather lovers among gods and men, but spurned giants who did not attract her, though they would often they often wooed her. Her love of beautiful objects sometimes overcame her good sense. Once she lowered herself to spend the night with four dwarfs in return for a magnificent necklace called Brisingamen that they had made. As punishment for her bad behavior over Brisingamen, Odin made Freya a goddess of death. She presided over battles and caused wars between kings on earth. She flew over the battlefield in her chariot pulled by two cats. She chose half of the bravest of warriors to accompany to her to Sesrimnir, her hall in Asgard after death. I thought that was Freya for a second. <laughs> she was very ugly. Like all of the Vanir, Freya was a fertility goddess. She brought prosperity by granting good harvests and successful fishing. She took special care of women who were getting married or having babies and made sure many healthy children and animals were born. The boar was her symbol, as it was her brother's. One of Freya's nicknames, one of Freya's nicknames was Seer, which means so. After the war between the gods, Freya went with her father and brother to live in Asgard with the Aesir. Freya was a powerful witch and taught the Asa her skills. She owned a magic falcon skin. When she put it on, her spirit could fly through the nine worlds. She made prophecies and foretold the future of all newborn babies. Freya was a son of Nod and brother to Freya, which we've just been told. <laughs> oh no, Freya. Okay. As a fertility god, like his sister, Freya granted peace and plenty to his followers. He was not a warrior god, and cared more for giving life than taking it. It was forbidden to carry arms or shed blood on land dedicated to him, and outlaws were not allowed in holy places. His worshippers prayed for his protection in battle, and often wore his symbol, the boar on their helmets. Freya owned a magic sword that moved through the air of its own accord. He also possessed the magic ship Skliplatnir, Skip, Skliplatnir. It was big enough to hold all the gods, but could be folded up and put in his pocket when not in use. It always had favorable wind. Freya's chariot was pulled by a magic golden boar named Glebretzi, made by the dwarfs. It could run as fast as any mount. Freya was married to the giantess Gerd. This is the story of their courtship. One day, Freya wandered into Odin's hall, Valakstjav, and sat on Odin's throne. He had no right to do this, and as had married the view of the Nine Worlds, his, I got that very wrong. As he admired the view of the nine worlds, his eye was drawn to Jotunheim, the land of the giants. There, leaving her father's hall, was Gerd, a dazzling frost giantess. Fear fell in love on sight, but it was hopeless as he knew he would never be allowed to marry her. Back in his own hall, Fear despaired. He could not eat or sleep and bitterly regretted his visit to Falak's chef. Jord grew worried. 
He found out what had happened from Freya's servant Skirnir. Njot was not keen to have a frost giantess as a daughter-in-law, but could not bear to see his son suffer. So he sent Skirnir to woo Gerd for Freya. It was too risky to let Freya go to Jordanheim himself. Freya gave Skirnir his magic sword and his magic horse, which could see in the dark and gallop through fire. The horse sped to Jotunheim, and through the ring of icy fire round Gerd's home. Gerd received Skirnir coldly. She rejected the offers of love, wealth, and eternal youth. Like all of her kind, her heart was ice. Skirnir then tried threats. He laid Freya's magic sword on the floor, telling Gerd that he would kill her, or kill her father when he came in. Afraid, Gerd agreed to marry Freya, or meet Freya. They would meet in nine days' time in the forest of Barry. Skirnir hurried back in triumph to Asgard. Freya could hardly bear the weight, but on the ninth day, he and Gerd met. Happily, the warmth of his love melted Gerd's frozen heart, and she became warm, oh, a warm, loving creature. They returned to Asgard and lived happily there. We will continue on the gods' first exploits in the next video. Thank you for joining me for another one. Hopefully you sleep well and do not have too many night terrors. For now, I will bid you good night. May the gods watch over you as you sleep. Farewell.